Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal video. Today we're going to be covering vertex painting and a few of its applications here in Unreal 5. As you can see, I've thrown together the scene to kind of demonstrate some of the strengths and the uh, nice uses of vertex painting to add some variation to your walls and things like that. If you look at the example here on the left, you can see this is kind of the example with some vertex painting to add some moss and some uh, darkness to the bricks and stuff like that. And then this is the um, example without any of that vertex painting on where it still looks pretty good, but you can see that you can start to see the tiling and stuff like that, which breaks down um, the quality of the scene when you can see the repetition in the materials. So um, that is kind of a use case of it here. And uh, we'll go ahead and get into how to set it up in your shader. So this is the overview where basically I have two different types of materials. I have the brick and the moss and all the textures that are um, applicable to those. I've got a uh, parameters for tiling so I can control the tiling scale of both the brick and the m moss separately. I've got a height mask, which is used here for my uh, lerping. I have a height lerp so that it applies more to the cracks in between the bricks before it applies to the top of the bricks. Um, and then that's really it. You have a vertex color here, which is what we're going to show you later how to actually utilize that. But it'll be how you can choose to mask off which material is showing how to make those additions to it. Um, and then the last thing I guess here is just um, instead of bringing in a whole new texture of a darker brick, basically I just had it multiplied um, by the original material brick color um, and then you can control that darkness here so that's a way to get a new effect to add some variation without having a whole new texture that has to be uh, get a, get another draw call for so um, yeah so that's kind of the quick dirty overview um, hopefully I scrolled around enough that you can kind of pick up what that is if you need to but we're gonna guess go ahead and jump into a fresh material and build this from scratch now so to go ahead and begin making the material we're gonna go ahead and right click anywhere in our content folder make a material. I'm going to name mine Vertex Painting Tutorial. You can name yours whatever you would like to. And then we're going to go ahead and open it up. And this is what a material looks like from scratch if you haven't, if you've just made a new one and you haven't done anything to it. This is what it's going to look like. It just has all your outputs with nothing else in it. Um, what else you're going to need for this is you're going to need um, textures for both your first and second material. In my case, I have a brick and a moss, but you can, yours can be whatever you'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and bring all the materials in for uh, my two variations, which in this case means I have six six textures that um, will be used. So that's two base color. I have two that are my ambient occlusion, roughness, and metalness packed. Um, and then I've got my two normal maps. Let's make sure they got the right ones here on top of each other. So that's my brick. That's my moss. That's my brick. That's my moss. Move that up. That's my brick. That's my moss. I'm just checking that over here on the left there. Okay. So those are good. We're going to bring in, if you right click, that's how you can bring up the search engine. I think either tab, yeah, tab or right click will do that. So we're going to bring in a text cord and then we're going to hold down M and click and that'll make a multiply. Drag that in here. I'm going to hold down S and click and that's going to create a scalar parameter and we're going to call this UV tile. A. We'll go ahead and control C, control V that, or control D, I think is duplicate. Yeah, let's do that instead. And we're going to rename this one to B. And then we're also going to select this and control D that. We can reuse the text node, it's fine. The text chord node. And then what you're seeing here now is we have a scale parameter for our A textures and our B textures individually. We'll go ahead and drag our UV tile A anywhere that our first material is being used. So the brick in my in my case here is going to receive all of the UV tile A after the multiply. And then the UV tile B is going to be going into anywhere that the moss texture is. Cool. That is nice and simple. Now we're going to go ahead and bring our height lerp in, which is um, basically going to have it so that our when we're painting in our vertex painting, it's going to target the in between the bricks first. So where the grout and where the crack is, we want that to be where the moss kind of builds up primarily. And then it'll start building on top of the bricks as we paint a more intense into the vertex painting. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click again and search height lerp and bring that in here. And we're going to need one of these for each of our groups here. So one for the base color, one for our packed map and one for our normal. We're going to plug in the A and B into their perspective uh, inputs. Oops. And then we'll go ahead and plug the results into their 
correct outputs and you are going to get an error real quick but that's fine we will fix that um, here because I'm doing a packed map we're going to bring a uh, split component plug the results into there and then it's going to be uh, ambient occlusion in the R roughness in the G and metalness in the B and then the last one is going to be our normal perfect so the reason all these nodes are currently giving us error messages is because they're not using a height map. There's no height texture uh, input yet. So we're going to have to go ahead and bring a height texture in. If you are using a height lerp, I will show you also how to use a non height lerp as well in a second for another one of the vertex painting uh, channels we're going to use. But in this case, like I said, I want the moss to apply first to the in between the cracks of the um, the brick first. And so actually I have this material that basically is a mask of the grout with a little bit of like leaking growing down. Um, and that's something I just authored for myself in um, Substance Designer as well as the materials here that I'm using. Um, but you can go ahead and plug, we're going to use the R channel and plug that into the height texture. And you can see immediately that the uh, error is going away. So really the last thing we need here before this is ready to go and be ready to use for vertex painting is we need to bring in that vertex color information so that the shader knows what to use in order to actually do the masking of putting moss on top of brick. So if you right click and search for vertex, you're actually going to see that there's a vertex color node. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use the red channel for our moss and brick masking. Um, so if we click the red pin and drag that into the transition phase pin of all of our height lerp nodes, this material is actually all ready to go to be used for vertex painting. Um, there is an additional contrast pin node that you can use if you would like to. All you really need to use is a scalar parameter. We'll call this uh, height or sorry, uh, lerp contrast, and plug that into the pin there. And that's really all you need there. And one more thing before we actually get to um, demonstrating the material in action, uh, I forgot one thing here. We do want to make sure that you set your UV tiles to one by default. Otherwise, they will just get stretched to infinity and basically only show one pixel of information from your UVs. So um, if you happen to be noticing that there were some issues going on, it's probably because of that. So go ahead and make sure to set their defaults here to a value of one, make sure to hit save, and then we're ready to demonstrate this material in action. Before we can actually demonstrate the vertex painting on our mesh, there's a couple of things we're going to need. First of all, you're going to actually want to make a material instance of the material so that you can actually um, change a lot of those parameters that we just made within the material. And then two, you're going to want to make sure that your mesh actually has some vertexes to paint on. Basically, it's using all those vertices to store information, kind of weights and values between the different vertices. Um, so in this case here, if I look at one of these, and if I hit Alt 2 to bring up the wireframe mode, you can see that this is a pretty dense mesh, which means that there's a lot of places for that vertex information to get saved to. So you're going to want to make sure that your meshes are a little bit subdivided um, just to actually be able to utilize this effect. And then, like I said, we're going to go ahead and take, if you right click on the material you just made, go up to Create Material Instance. And then I'm going to name mine Vert Paint <laughs> Cut. <laughs> and then that is what you're going to want to apply to your mesh. So if I go ahead and select my two meshes here, click and drag this over to the element zero in the materials here, that is now applied to this mesh here. So I've got to move my camera over just a little bit just because there's going to be some information in this square here that you're going to need to be able to see. But to begin vertex painting, what you're going to want to do is go up to the top left where it says Select Mode. We're going to go to Mesh Paint. You can also do Shift 4 as the hotkey to get there. And then what you'll see here is that it allows you to do select and then you can start painting. So we want to select our meshes first. So if you hit select or if you're in the select menu, click on your mesh and then hold down shift and you can click on multiple meshes there to select multiple for vertex painting. Once we've done our selection, we'll click on the paint tab to move over to that. And then because we put our moss uh, brick masking in the red channel in our material, we're going to want to make sure that only the red channel is masked. And then there are some settings up here for you to control the size, strength, and fall off of your brush here. Size is pretty obvious. It shows you how big this circle is going to be. Um, and then the strength is how like intense that brushing is going to be. And then the fall off is kind of like a softness, hardness uh, scale. I'm going to go ahead and set something like a 0.5. Keep this down pretty low at like 0.15. And then fall off is fine. Um, and then last thing here is with the red channel selected, you can see that we have the paint color and the erase color. You can hit X to kind of toggle between those two. Um, and white is 100% intensity, red, uh, black is 0% intensity. So that's how if you were to paint here, basically you can see that as I start painting now, it starts applying that uh, moss 
and you'll see here like if I zoom in here real quick how it's putting the moss in between the bricks first that is what that height lerp does specifically for us and that's why we want to utilize that for this case um, if I hit X to switch to black I can start painting out whatever I don't like if I like don't want it in certain areas um, it's really handy to use and you can see uh, wherever these green squares here is actually where any vertex is on the mesh and that's kind of what's providing that resolution to be able to apply that vertex color to it here um, so it's actually highlighting the meshes for us it's highlighting the vertices for us when we're hovering over the mesh that's pretty cool um, let's go ahead and jump back into the material and we can add in that darkening that brick effect that will apply on the vertex green channel vertex color green channel which is basically you would just move from uh, checking the red to only checking the green and then the same thing would apply you can see right now that nothing will happen when we paint white in because there's no information to apply there but we're gonna go ahead and jump into the material add that functionality and then when we come back you'll see that there will now be a giant big black splotch in the middle where our bricks will be darker now we're back here in the material again and to add that darkening of that brick effect that we were talking about earlier all you really need to do is come up here and find your base color information we're gonna go ahead and add a multiply and a scalar parameter we're gonna call that brick darkness darkness <laughs> darkness let's make sure that default value is set to 1 because that's gonna basically be a multiply at 100% value which means no effect at first and then we'll plug that into the A instead and what we want to do for the lerping here is if we hold down L and click that'll create just a lerp it's not a height lerp it's, it's different it won't it won't utilize a height mask it'll just use an input specifically and for that alpha input we're going to use the green channel of our vertex color basically what that's saying is that anywhere there is green painted it's going to use the darkened brick and anywhere that there's not green painted it's just going to use the base color as it as it is already and that's really all you need to do to add that in there so let's go ahead and save and we'll go ahead and see that effect like I said we'll see that big splotch of darkness that is where we've painted the green already on the mesh so because we set our default value of one for our multiply uh, we actually aren't going to see an effect until we go and change that so if we open up our material instance here and we scroll over to where we have that brick darkness we want to set that to something like 0.4 and then go ahead and save our material and now if we look at here we can see that that dark splotch in the middle is where we painted our green information before so again we can go back into here and select our two meshes and with the green channel selected specifically we can control where that dark parameter is I'm gonna turn the strength up just so it's a little easier to push things around but this is where you can see kind of the power of being able to add some color variation basically to add just some variety there and really break up the texture you remember at the beginning of the tutorial I was showing you that this, as a blank slate you can really see some of the um, the resolution or the repetition of the material um, but this really helps to just kind of hide it really nicely by adding some quick variation um, in a way that's really only using one material and just a couple of textures uh, to make some nice um, changes that really just adds an overall level of variety and just like depth to the scene that is missing without it so so that's really all I have for you guys today. I hope you found that useful and you learned a little bit about how to apply vertex painting to your scenes to kind of just bring out that next level of quality to them. Um, if you haven't already, a subscribe is always helpful to me and it'll allow you to see more content like this in the future. Um, I also stream this kind of stuff over on Twitch where you can join the conversation live while I'm working on my personal projects if you ever have any questions there that you'd like to ask. And the last thing is go ahead and leave a comment down below with other kinds of content you'd like me to tackle in Unreal Engine. I uh, just would love to know what other kind of stuff would be helpful for you guys to know. But with that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Appreciate you stopping in, and I really hope this was useful for you. Peace.